What's up, what's up, what's up? I am late tonight, Sunday night check-in. What's going on, Dr. Cecilia Tyler Inspires? Come on in, Royal Latoya, Nathan, World Traveler, Talbert, Angela, Micah, Aish. I know I'm still not saying that right, Aish. Bianca, good evening, good evening. Hey, Ashley, what's going on? The Brownie Bunch. What's going on? What's going on, y'all? Come on in. Uh, what am I looking for? Hope all is well. I fell asleep, so I took my, not my nap late, Dr. Cecilia. So I actually didn't get to finish my nap because I was awakened. So then it took me a while to just get on up and say, well, let me go on and get this live started. D Michael 994, Miss Kena Lene, hey Aletta. Kajaska or Ar Kaja. I don't know. No, no, no. That's wrong. K A J S A Cole. Come on in. Yeah, so I was awakened. Hey, Jasmine. What's going on? Hey, Vanessa. Come on in, Lady K Harris. How are you all? What's been going on with you all? Let me see this in another version while people are coming on in. I don't, I don't, I have something in my spirit, but I don't know if it's really finished for me to talk about. What's going on, Keisha? What's on? I'm go I'm well. I'm well. I was a little sleepy tonight. Da hey, Diana. Yeah, I am ministering tomorrow night. And um, so I was trying to decide if I was really getting on. You are right. You are right. Life is good. That's great. Oh, wow. Walking out of the wilderness. Yes, Bianca. Because 40 is the number of testing and trying, tri uh, tri trials and testing. Hey, Jasmine. Hey, Katandra. So proud of you, Katandra, and the journey that you're on. Praying for your success there. Uh, April and I just spoke about you uh, last week, so I'm so very proud of you. The Stace and Maisha. Come on in, come on in, Lady K. Harris. What's going on, Miami kid? So listen, let's start by just the normal um, Sunday night check-in announcements. If you have not, please um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. We are trying to get that YouTube channel up. How are you doing, Miss Phyllis? God is a good God. Yes, he is. That's what I heard as soon as I saw your name, Anastasia. I love you too, Katandra. Um, come on in. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Um, God is doing great and mighty things in the earth, great and mighty exploits. God is um, showing himself strong and mighty in the hearts and minds and physically in the bodies of the believers. And so, um, we were praying for um, Billy. For those of you who know, Billy comes on every time we go live, uh, generally. I'm not sure if he'll be on tonight, but Miss St Miss Phyllis is his mom. And I'm only saying this because uh, Billy put it all in his stories last week, if you follow him. Hey, Sabrina. And so he uh, had a, just a little brush with illness, but the Lord is faithful and the Lord is good. And the Lord has seen him through and brought him out. So God is a good God. Yes, he is. The devil is already defeated and he is a defeated foe. And so 
We are just excited about the goodness of the Lord and be safe, son, in the land of the living. We are excited about all God is doing in this season and in this time. Hey, smarty pants, listen, it's it's um it's it's something in the air. Hey, lady HMC, at anybody with any any God in them, whether you're just really filled to the brim with the Holy Ghost, if you will. Or if you just got saved and some not even being saved, we can sense that there is something going on in the atmosphere. And so we are just pressing into the Holy Spirit, um, leaning into him more and more each day. And so this Friday night, I'll start this way. Friday night, hey, Elder Chris, I went to, hey, Zuri Beauty. This Friday night, uh, past Friday night, I uh, attended a prayer service. Well, actually a worship night. But of course, if you have ever been to um, Faithfield Church, um, Close in the Gap has been held at Faithfield Church uh, multiple times in the past. Then, you know, past, past, Pastor Joshua Parr, and so, which is my, who is my spiritual son. They had a, mine and Pastor Dobbins' spiritual son, but they had what they call worship night, which is really just a lot of prayer, a lot of worship. Um, but they, they had guest pastors there. And so, uh, it was a blessing to just attend and sit in the room and, um, and witness the movement of God. Um, and what I want to say about that is to witness the consistency of the movement of God. God is not double-minded. God is not sporadic. Uh, but there is a consistency in the flow of God. And so to sit in that room was much like sitting at Closing the Gap. And I understand and I know completely that God is raising up an army uh, for, for this end time. And so, um, listen... We, uh, the Bible tells us someone's already asking questions about spiritual warfare. Let me say this. I forget to say this, um, uh, because I'm not really the best salesman. Um, uh, I, I, I don't, I'm not the best salesman. I can admit that. So I forget to say, because I don't want to list so many things every Sunday night or every time I get on over and over again. So I kind of do it at the Lord's leading. Hey, walk away, Renee, the Royal uh, Lat oh, Latoya, I spoke to you already, Miss Ohio Realtor. Um, but I have a spiritual warfare class on my website. It is $99. The people that have gone through that class, it is a class that you take at your own pace and it is on demand. And um, I have um, the Holy Spirit class on my website. If you go to my website, christydobbins.com, if you click courses icon, it will take you to those choices. And the Holy Spirit is free. It's what I suggest that people take um, before they go into uh, spiritual warfare. And I have, um, it's not called spiritual warfare. Actually, it's called spiritual boot camp because so often we're focused on the warfare part of spiritual that we overlook the foundation of our spiritual formation that is needed in order for us to actually wage a good war. And so we always want to sometimes start in the deep with going into battle. But what I want to say about that is, um, every prayer that you pray is warfare. I'm going to say that again. And I guess this is where we're going to go for a second. Since I started talking about this, every prayer that you pray is warfare. Any prayer that you communicate with God, you're receiving instructions or you're receiving something from him. A, you, you, by, by just praying, you are engaging in warfare. And a lot of times we like to go deep. We want to go into demonology and we want to go into all of these other things before we have somewhat mastered the very basics of, of prayer and of walking in the spirit and of spiritual formation, which when you listen to that word spiritual formation, hey sister, uh, L-I-S, when you listen to that word spiritual formation, and I'm going to just, this is not the full definition of spiritual formation. I would pull up my notes to give you a more accurate one, but I don't have my laptop here with me. 
Maybe I can access some of my Google Docs from my iPad, but it has it needs to be updated or something. It's not operating properly. Um, but let me say this. Spiritual formation. First of all, spiritual is the adjective here or the description. So just the same way as you were formed naturally, you were formed in your mother's womb. That's what the Bible used before I formed you in your mother's womb. Just as you were formed in your mother's womb naturally, you are formed spiritually. And many of us, depending on the spiritual diets that we have encountered throughout us being believers, it depends on the maturity or thank you, Holy Spirit, rather, the development of your spiritual formation. Spiritual formation is the forming and the shaping of you in the spirit. And a lot of times, again, we like to skip to just, oh, I want to go to wage warfare, depending on what um, denomination you're in. Hey, Leslie, depending on what denomination you're in, you want to go straight to spiritual warfare. You want to go straight to casting out devils and things of that nature. But there is something called spiritual warfare formation. You you need to be formed spiritually. You need to learn basic things, how to walk after the spirit so that you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. All of these things are beneficial to you uh, in waging war. And you have to understand when we talk about warfare, and for those of you who are coming in, I wasn't really planning to teach on spiritual warfare, but someone asked a question and I still told them, I, for, I forget, I'm not a great salesman. I do have a class that is still on my website. It is $99. It is on demand. You can take it, but it is spiritual uh, boot camp. That class, there is a free class called the Holy Spirit that I suggest you take first that you take, and then you can take the spiritual boot camp class, and it walks you through spiritual formation. It walks you through uh, fruits of the spirit. It walks you through gifts of the spirit. It walks you through so many things that are connected to you being successful in the spirit. Oftentimes, we learn everything we need to learn about being successful in the natural that we negate to put in the time and put in the study to be uh, successful in the spirit. We neglect, we act as if sometimes our spiritual walk is almost uh, magic. We act as if we get spirit, we get saved, and that God does everything for us. When actually there is a spiritual forming that needs to take place in the life of every believer. Hey Jada, I need to talk to you this week, Jada. So t text me your um. Your, your times of availability, I know you're on the West Coast, but text me your times of availability so that I can reach out to you. Hey, Nicole, uh, Shaquille Turner, uh, I do, I see two Nicoles coming on. Uh, I see Terry coming on. I see quite a few people coming on all at the same time. So when we talk about spiritual warfare, um, when we talk about spiritual warfare, I, I want you to know, and I started off saying this, that anytime you pray, you are actively engaging in battle. Anytime you open up your mouth and talk to what I would call the commander in chief, where you talk to God, you are engaging in battle. Anytime you solicit and summons the assistance of the heavenly armies, of the angels, the angelic hosts, you are actively engaging in warfare. So the person that asked me the question about warfare, I am not sure the depths of what you are asking about warfare and how to engage, but I can tell you the very basics of it is reading your word. The very basics of it is reading your word. First of all, being filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, um, that, that, that being filled, being filled. According to Acts chapter 19, the apostle Paul ran across a group of believers and he asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Which is an indicator that there is an additional filling that is needed for the believer. And they replied to him, we have not even heard whether there be such a Holy Ghost. And so he then asked them, unto what baptism were you baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism, which was the 
baptism of repentance, which was water baptism, which was an outward sign of what happened inwardly. But listen, the Holy Spirit is not an outward sign. It is an inward sign. It is an inward work done by the Holy Spirit who regenerates us, who is regenerative, which means regene, R-E-G-E-N-E, -E -E, much like the genes that you already have in your body from your, your natural DNA, the Holy Spirit re-DNAs you. The Holy Spirit regenerates you. He re-DNAs you, which is why it is critical for you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And so then the Apostle Paul had to preach to them. If you understand, they said, we have not even heard that there be such a Holy Ghost. So they did not even know that there was a next step that they could have of an infilling, of an indwelling, of a baptism, of an immersion into the Holy Ghost. So then they followed. Paul's instructions and he laid hands I believe in that passage of scripture and if he did or did not I can't remember completely but you don't have to have hands to be laid on you to receive the Holy Ghost and that's why on my website if you go to courses I have a free course on the Holy Ghost because we all need to be filled with the Holy Ghost and I guess this is the shift that we're taking tonight I wasn't planning on talking about spiritual warfare but I need you to understand that we are in a battle last week I posted two reels about being dressed and having on the full armor of God because we are in a spiritual battle I need to remind you that the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight but that's not just our natural walk that we're walking around and that we have to believe and have faith despite of the external circumstances that we see oh no 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 you're fine you don't have to apologize someone else must need to hear this lady HMC you ask the question but someone else must need to hear this so you do not have to apologize I just know that I can't go into a greater depth as I would like to just in one setting when we're talking about spiritual warfare because when we talk about spiritual warfare it's almost like we can't talk about uh, we have to start with addition and then subtraction and then multiplication and then division. It's much like a building. We don't just start off today getting saved and going out laying hands and casting out demons, even though you could. But most people don't because their faith is not built up to even believe that they can lay hands on or in the name, by, in the name of Jesus that they could speak to a demon and command it to come out. But we're back to talking about spiritual warfare and about what's going on right now. There is a heightened sense of spiritual attacks that are occurring right now. Listen, now we don't hit the prophetic flow. So this was actually meant for us to talk about this. Listen, I don't, I haven't even sat here and done the history of Halloween and done the history of all of these things, but I want you to know that there are Satanist groups who actively worship the devil during this season. And anytime that is happening, there is a heightened sense of war that is going on in the heavenlies. Remember in the book of Daniel, when Daniel prayed to the Lord and he prayed, and then the Bible lets us know that he fasted 21 days. And on the 21 days, uh, 21st day, the angel showed up, the messenger angel showed up, Gabriel, and said, God heard you on the first day, but when I came to bring you your answer, I was held up by the prince of Persia or the prince of the air, and so the messenger angel, angel wasn't, it is not the warring angel, and God had to send the warring angel to wrestle and to release him so that he could bring the message to Daniel. Somebody has already prayed a prayer that you have not yet seen the answer to your prayer. Somebody has already been believing God for something. And it's not that God didn't hear you. You have just not seen the answer yet because there is a principality or power that is withstanding your answer in the airways. This is why it is important now more than ever that we be dressed in the full armor of God. I talked about that last week. I talked Talked about that on my reels last week. I'm not just talking to be talking. I'm not just talking to say, let me get a reel to get a lot of, to get a lot of, um, a lot of likes or a lot of views. I am telling you in the spirit, we need to be dressed every day. We need to uh, stand therefore. We need to have our, our loins girt around, girt, girt about with the, with the belt of truth. And that, 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 I, I, 
it's a, I can't go into it because I feel the spirit and now I'm getting ahead of myself. My mind and my mouth are having a hard time or my spirit and my mouth are having a hard time staying in sync one with another. So I got to slow myself down. But you have got to get fully dressed. But I want to talk about that belt of truth for a moment because you understand in the natural what a belt does. Yes, we can get belts for, for uh, fashion. We can get all kind of name brand belts these days for fashions. But in the original intent, they were created to hold up what you have on. And it doesn't matter if you put on every other element of the body of the armor of God, if you do not have the belt of truth, which is the word of God, which will be able to hold the entire armor up. We're talking about spiritual warfare if you come on because someone asked a question about spiritual warfare. And I just want you to know that anytime you pray, you are engaging in warfare. You are entering into a realm that is not of this world. That's what makes it spiritual warfare. See, natural warfare is, is physical, where you touch a person, where you physically are going hand-to-hand -hand combat, or you have confrontation or conflict with someone. But spiritual warfare is when you have entered into the spiritual realm in order to possess the things that you are seeking. There are some things that you are asking God for that cannot be done by money. The Bible tells us that money answers all things. So yes, if it is a house, it can be answered with money. If it is a car, it can be answered with money. But there is something that is going on right now that cannot be done with money. Hey, Kersion, Kersion, I don't know why you got on right now, but there is something that you are working with, something you are working on, something you are seeking to do, that you are seeking, thank you Holy Spirit, to complete that will not be completed with money only. You are going to have to step into the spirit realm and pull down and possess what God has for you for this season. Listen, this is the time of year when companies and when people are all planning for the next year. And I'm not telling you not to plan for 2023. But what I am telling you is do not abandon what God wants to complete in 2022 by, by focusing solely on what is to come. There are some promises of God that are still yes and amen in 2022. There are some things that God still wants to do. That's why we feel this push. That's why we feel this acceleration of warfare in the in the in the in the in the earth realm or in the heavenly realm. And I don't mean the heavenly realm where God lives. You have to understand that there are multiple layers of the heavenly realms. So where the devil is the prince of air, he has been allowed to be the prince of air. That is not the heavenly realm where God is. That is not where Jesus is seated in heavenly places. No, these are heavenly realms. Lord, I, I don't have time to go into all of that, but this all was prompted by somebody asking about spiritual warfare. And what I need you to know is if you are a Christian, you are automatically engaged in warfare. When you name the name of the Lord, you automatically are put on the hit list of the devil. If the devil is not fighting against you, it is because you are on his team. You are on the same side. So he does not have to wage war against somebody who is lukewarm because there is nothing about your spiritual walk that is a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Listen. There is nothing about your walk that is a threat to darkness when you are lukewarm. What is lukewarm? The Bible says, I would rather have you hot or cold than lukewarm. If you are lukewarm, the Bible says he will spew you. That's the King James version. But in, in our version, he will spit you out. He will spit you out. This is not the season to be halted between two opinions. This is not the season to vacillate and to do what you want to do. And we've all done it. I've repented for areas where I was walking in carnality because this is not the season to be carnal because the Bible says a carnal mind is enmity against God. So a carnal mind, you can be a Christian and be carnally minded and be an enemy against God, even though you believe in Jesus because God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. There is not one battle in the spirit that you can fight with your carnal mind. What is your carnal mind? Your will, your mind, your emotions, the things 
things you can think of, the things you can touch, the things you can smell, the things you can taste. Those are your senses. That's the carnal part of you. That's the fleshly part of you. You cannot wage a spiritual battle with carnal tools or carnal weapons. Listen. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is where we're going right now. Let me, let, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This, this is, this is, oh God, oh God. I, I feel this, this, the shift. Hallelujah. Listen, uh, I'm going to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Where is my Bible app? 2 Corinthians. Me and this iPad. Chapter 10. Now I'm going to just start walking. And this is where God intended for us to be. This is where God intended for us. If you're on here tonight, you're either entering a spiritual battle, you are already in a spiritual battle, or something is on the horizon. How are you doing, Prophet Kelly Cruz? There is something on the horizon. This dialogue tonight began by somebody asking me about spiritual warfare. And I want you to know that anytime you are praying, which is a spiritual weapon, you are engaging in warfare. Even when you are, if you are sincerely from your heart, blessing your food and honoring God, anytime you are speaking to the Father, you are engaging by default into warfare because this battle has been raging since before you and I even were on this planet. You entered a spiritual battle that existed before you and it's not even about you. The enemy just looks at you and he is seeking whom he may devour because he is looking for collateral damage. He understands that he is already defeated. He understands that he already has limited power. He understands that the only power he actually has is that which we give to him, is that which we hand over to him. And because he understands that, he is looking for you as a believer to not even to not know your rights, to not know who you are, to be a carnal, to not operate and walk in the spirit, but to be a Christian who lives like a sinner so that you have absolutely no power against the wiles or the schemes of the devil. He understands that you will be defeated by your own uh, on your own accord and you will forfeit your rights that God has already given you because you don't know who you are and you, oh God, oh God, now y'all gonna, oh God, oh God, I, I have to say it. You're not disciplined enough to kill your flesh to do what God is asking you to do in this season. Listen, this is not the time to be a friend of the world because listen, I know we like to say things like Jesus loved the world and yes, Jesus loved the world because he died for the world but I want you to understand that God loves the world, but God is a holy God. And because he is a holy God, he actually abhors or hates sin. So do not think that you can just say God loves everybody. And it means that God accepts everything that you do because God is a holy God. Do not allow the dialogue that has been changed, the narrative that has been changed on earth, that if you do not agree with the person that we consider love and agreement synonymous, love and agreement are not synonymous. I can love you and not agree with you. I can love you and not support the lifestyles in which you choose. And that's not just one lifestyle. We're not pointing out one person, one sin over the other here. What I'm telling you is God is a holy God. And he said it this way, be ye holy for I am holy. And listen, he understands that we cannot obtain holiness on our own regard. And so it takes God to even become holy, which is why the book of Romans chapter 12 tells us to do not copy the customs of this world, world, but change the way you think by renewing your mind. When you renew your mind with the word of God, it produces spiritual fruit in your life. Listen, I, I don't know where we're going tonight, but I need somebody to listen to me. You have been in a fight and you have been in a fight with the devil and sometimes you feel like you get victory but all, what it ha what is happening is this it's not victory listen it's not victory oh jesus sometimes you believe i got to slow myself down to get this out somebody on here listening to me you believe at different seasons and times that you 
have victory over a particular sin. But actually what happens is it the enemy is deceiving you and almost causing your desires to go into remission. Much like how they say the cancer is going into remission, which means it's lying dormant, which means it's not completely gone, which means it could return and come back again. And if you understand that about, us, about sickness and disease, then you need to understand that about sin. The enemy will stop fighting against you long enough to deceive you into believing that you have the victory and you will then go back into territory that you have not yet conquered and had the victory over prematurely and you go back in trying to snatch somebody out of the pit of hell but because your sin was laying dormant and you really did not have the victory, when you go back in, the enemy snatched Matches you unaware. My God, my God, my God, listen. In a day and time when we are becoming popular on telling our testimonies, you need to understand the purpose of your testimony. The Bible tells us, and we overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. Most people leave out that word him. Most people say we overcame by the blood of the lamb or we overcome by the blood of the lamb. But no, you overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the words of your testimony. The problem is some of you are telling testimonies prematurely. You are starting to build a ministry, build, build, build your platform on a testimony that you don't have the full victory and the enemy is seducing you and he is luring you and he's causing people to come around you and want to hear what you have to say because of your testimony, not because of the word of God, not because of any spiritual gifts, but because of your your testimony listen to me do not allow yourself to be deceived in this in this day the enemy is setting you up to build you up for a fall he's building you up for a fall and he is using you against you he is using your desire to be loved against you. He is using your desire to want to be known against you. He's using your desire for fame or your desire for success against you. And you tell these testimonies too soon. You tell them before you have actually walked it out. You tell it when you just got victory the first time, but you didn't get victory the second and the third. You have not been tested, tried, and proven in that area and you tell it prematurely and you invite in attacks unaware. Now the enemy is fighting against you based on who you say you are, even though you don't realize that's not even who you fully are yet. You're, you're on your way, but you're not there yet. I don't know who you are. Don't let them push you too soon. Don't get lured into the riches of this world. Don't get lured into what everybody has to say. They're crying Hosanna today. But when the enemy sets you up and a fall comes, then they're going to say crucify him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last week, I shared about my husband and I, and I shared about being a blended family. But you know what, what happened is? That's an old testimony. That's not a testimony that we, we had last week, last month, last year, two years ago, three years ago. It's a real testimony. Hallelujah. If you go out too fast, yes, you're not equipped for the battle that you're going to encounter. Hallelujah. It sounds like I'm switching, but I'm not. I want to read some scriptures because I need to talk about this battle that we're in, this warfare that we're in. I'm in, in, I'm in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and I'm just going to start reading at the beginning, even though this is not where I'm attempting to go. Says now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Meekness. 
that strength under control, meekness, that strength under control where Jesus hung on a cross, a cross where he could have summoned angels to come and get him down. But that meekness, that strength under control allowed him to stay in, 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 in hang on the cross and die and give up the ghost and not feel the need to prove who he was, to not get up, give up quickly or get off the cross prematurely because he didn't feel the need to prove who he was was he had to demonstrate it. And some of you keep getting sidetracked by needing to prove who you are prematurely, but you need meekness, which is strength under control. Now, my Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in the presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Let me read those two verses for you right quick in the New Living so you'll understand it. Now I, Paul, appeal to you with the gentleness and kindness of Christ, though I realize you think I am a timid person and bold only when I write you far from far away. So Paul is saying, you think I'm timid and you think that I'm only writing you from a particular boldness because I'm not there with you. Well, I am begging you now so that when I come, I won't have to be bold with those who think we act from human motives. So he says, I'm begging you in this letter so that when I come, I don't have to be bold for those people who think that we are fighting after the flesh. So now I'm going back to verse three in the King James. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Listen. I, I'm going to just stop right there for a moment because this, this is a lot. These scriptures are a lot. Let me read them to you in the New Living Translation, Translation so you can really understand. It says, verse 3 says, we are human, but we do not wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds. I want y'all to listen to what the strongholds are. Listen to what the strongholds are. Of the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. I'm going to read this to you in the Amplified Version. I'm going to read all five scriptures and we're getting ready to talk for a moment. Now I, Paul, urge you by the gentleness and graciousness of Christ. I am, I am, I who am meek, so they say, when with you face to face, but bold and outspoken and fearless towards you when I am absent. I ask that when I do come, I will not be driven to the boldness that I intend to show toward those few who regard us as if we walk according to the flesh, like men without the spirit. For though we walk in the flesh as mortal men, we are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using the weapons of man. The weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying sophisticated arguments. Hey, Daria. And every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. I want to read that again in the New Living when it says, We use God's mighty weapons. 
not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning. Let's stop right there. The strongholds of human reasoning and false arguments. This is Paul saying to the Corinthian church. For those of you who understand the Corinthian church, they are much like the church, the modern church right now. The Corinthian church is highly gifted, highly intelligent. The Corinthian church is, is extremely spiritual. And actually also the Corinthian church is extremely smart, extremely gifted, extremely spiritual, and extremely sinful. They're carnal. So I shouldn't say they're extremely spiritual, so I strike that. They're carnal. They are carnal Christians. What is a carnal Christian? A carnal Christian is someone who has named the name of the Lord, who has received Jesus, but has denied the work, the work of the word of God or the the regenerative power of the Holy Spirit to transform you from the inside out. So a carnal Christian actually can live just like a sinner. But the Bible says God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible also says to be carnally minded. That's an enmity against God. So Paul is saying, I know you've been talking because I come to you such in such meekness. But you, and I know some of you are saying, oh, I'm bold in these letters that I write, but I'm not as bold when I come in person. He said, but I want you to understand I'm writing you this boldly so I don't have to come and be bold in person. And to let you know that even though we walk in the flesh, even though I'm a human being, I don't fight as a human fights. I fight after the spirit. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So he lets you know, my, my weapons are not carnal. They are not anything that you can conjure up. They're not what you can think with your mind. They're not your human reasoning. They're not your human intellect. My weapons are not my degrees. My we weapons are not my pedigrees. It's not my background. It's not my money. It's not how many followers I have. It's not my status. Listen, you are not anointed. To, you are not anointed to walk in spiritual victory because you are popular. And listen, the Bible says, he promised to make your name great, but your name being great and your name being famous are not synonymous. You can be famous and not have a good name. So you need to be careful of what you are seeking. This is the time to put your heart before the Lord and say, Lord, I need you to purge me with hyssop. What are my motives? What are the weapons that I am using? Am I bringing all of my natural weapons into the kingdom? Did I come into the kingdom and think I can work my way up in the kingdom? the way I worked my way up a corporate ladder? Did I come into the kingdom and think that I should become a pastor, or apostle, or whatever because I have degrees and because of who I know and because of what my social media status, because I have social equity, because I have social equity, yeah, because I have social worth, because some I have so many followers. Do I bring all of that and thinks it translates to the kingdom? Paul says no. Our weapons are not carnal. Our weapons are not made of this world, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Every, 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 every theology that you heard that was in error, every, every philosophy that you heard was in error. Listen, when he's saying right now, I'm going to tell you what I'm hearing. When I hear this human reasoning, I'm, I'm hearing all of the isms that have crept into the church. Secularism has crept into the church. Humanism has crept into the church. New Ageism has crept into the church. And what the enemy has done is he has hijacked some of the Christian language. But because he has separated the Christian language from Christ, he has made it something that it is not. It was never intended to be. So he uses words that sound Christian, but their origin is not Christian because he has disconnected the words from Christ. I'm going to give you an example. There is a very popular saying, and all of this falls under witchcraft. And perhaps that's why we're talking about all of this tonight, because we are in the witchcraft season. We're in the witchcraft holiday. We're in the witchcraft holiday. We're in the satanic holiday right now. All of this, 
this hijacking that the enemy has done, that he has stolen the language from the church and people are confused because it sounds good. They don't know that it's not God. I'm going to give you an example. There is a phrase that we hear people say all the time. We see them sign it on their social media statuses. We see them sign it if you buy their products and they send you something in the mail and there's a cute card in the mail and because it's been packaged properly and they sign it, love and light. Charismatic witchcraft. Yes, ma'am. Love and light. Well, see, you have to understand that love is something that came from God because God is love. There would absolutely be no love in this world apart from God. God is love. Not God has love. Not God does love. God is synonymous with love. There is no love in the earth. If God withdraws his love, love as we all know it, know it would dissipate and disappear. So they say love and light. But love is God. Then they say light, but they're not talking about the light that God said in the beginning of in, in Genesis chapter 1 when he says, let there be light and there was light. There was light before there was the sun, the moon, and the stars that were created on the fourth day. That light was Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. So they take love away from God and they take light away from Jesus and then they put love and light together but they are absent of the original origins of those words emanating from God and emanating from Jesus who is the light of the world and now the church is the light of the world and they take those words and they put them together and it's a blessing. It's called a blessing in New Ageism. So I want you to understand that new age is not just a description. It is a religion. So when you have your chakras and you have um, the little things that the symbols and you need certain vibrations and certain energies that bring you peace. They are all a substitute for the origin of these words. Jesus is the prince of peace. So how do you expect to get peace if you are doing it absent of him? Listen, the only way to have peace of the peace of God is to have peace with God. And the only way to have peace with God is to ex accept Jesus who is the propitiation of our sin. So what they do is they remove the peace from Jesus and they have you clinging on a symbol and they have you going through vibrations in order to center yourself and it is all ungodly. Human reasoning and false. False. I'm going to read it in the New Living again. Strongholds of human reasoning and destroying false arguments. So I have a little bit of Jesus. I have a little bit of Jesus. Listen to me. I have a little bit of Jesus. Hey, Shawnee. I have a little bit of Jesus. Hey, Trent. I have a little bit of Jesus. And I'm going to spray all this sage over me. Because I need to clean my atmosphere. Even though I say I believe in Jesus. I don't believe that Jesus told me that I have the power to speak to spirits and they leave my atmosphere. Listen, 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 let me say this to you. There's a passage of scripture. Yes, destroying false altars. Passage of scripture where Jesus encounters a man filled with demons. And if you understand this, when the, the demons recognize Jesus, Jesus doesn't go up to the man and lay hands on him. The, Jesus, the demons see the anointed one, the son of God coming, and they, I'm going to use a word y'all use, they manifest. The, the Jesus, the presence of God, causes these demons to manifest, which means it makes these demons identify themselves. A demon cannot be, is not at peace in the presence of the true power of God. It has to uh, show himself because that presence 
uh, disrupts him so that he has to announce that he's there. Whether he speaks through the person, whether he starts, the person starts foaming at the mouth and it's not limited to that. I'm just telling you things that I've witnessed, whether the person starts acting out, whatever it is, it is because the presence of God is so heightened that it can no longer be hidden. But I want you to listen to what the demon said. And I'm paraphrasing. He says, do not send us. First, he says, you're here before time. This is not the time that you were supposed to be here. So even the devil knows there is an appointed time with God that we don't have time to even get off on that. You keep thinking God is late. You keep thinking God forgot about you. And even the devil knows there's an appointed time. But these demons say, don't throw us out of the region. Don't throw us out of the regions. Send us into the pigs. Now, I'm not even going to get in this story. I don't have to get. I just want you to know that Jesus didn't obey the demons because it would look like he obeyed the demons because he sent them into the pig. He granted them their requests. He did not send them out of the region. But I submit to you that just as there is activity going on throughout all this earth. Jesus knows there is an appointed time that he will come back and he will disrupt all of hell and every demon and every imp. And he knew this was not that time. So he cast the demon out of the man with demons, but he did not send demons out of the region. Some of you have been praying prayers to the demons that are in your region and you are praying amiss. You need to go back and read that story carefully because some of you have stepped into spiritual realms that you have not been given authority. That demonic presence has, has an appointed time that it has been allowed to be here. That presence being in the atmosphere has no authority or has no control over you being victorious because the victory is already in you because it's in Christ. Jesus. I want you to think about what I said, but the Bible says it this way. The heavens, yea, the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth belongs to the man. The earth belongs to man. The air doesn't belong to man. The earth belongs to man. If it's in earth, you have authority over it. So when a demon is in a person in earth, we are earth. When a demon is in a person and is treading on territory that does not belong to them, you have authority to cast it out. If the demon is going out through your house, this is your territory. You have the authority to cast it out. But sometimes we don't just cast out or attempt to cast out in our sphere of influence or our, no, not influence, in our sphere of authority. Because influence and authority are not synonymous. Sometimes we step into realms that were not given to us. And then we summons to us warfare that would not have been had we not stepped out of a sphere of authority. Jesus did not tell the demons to get out of the region. He simply cast them out of the man. See, the Bible says it this way, that the adversary seeketh whom he may devour. And this is why we spend time telling you not to be a carnal Christian, because when you are a carnal Christian, you are opening up the gates for the enemy to come in because you are he's seeking whom he may devour. Who will grant him permission? Who will grant him access? Who will grant him permission by what they allow in their ear gate? Who will grant him access by what they allow in their ear gate? Who will grant him permission? Hallelujah. So I'm not lost. Brownie Bunch fam, ask that question again because I may not remember in a few minutes. I want to finish this part. So he says it this way. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. 
I want to go back. Let's go back to Daniel right quick. When the messenger angel had sent Daniel, uh, the, the message had been given to Daniel. Daniel's prayers had been answered and the messenger angel had the prayer. Even the messenger angel, Gabriel, an angel could not overcome the prince of Persia, the prince that was in that airways. God had to send the archangel, the warring angel to come and release him so that the answer could get to Daniel. He said he withstood me. He said he withstood me and Michael came and warred on my behalf. This is why you have to be careful that you don't try to just be so spiritually deep that you step outside of realms of authority. This is why the Bible says my people perish for the lack of knowledge. Sometimes we go in, I came through the old Pentecostal way. Let me give you this example. And I grew up hearing everybody say, Satan, I rebuke you. Satan, I rebuke you. Hey, Marcia. But it was not until I grew up in the spirit myself and that I began to search the scripture and I saw that, wait a minute, the Bible says, Satan, the Lord rebuked thee. Christy does not have any authority over the devil. That's why the Bible says, when Jesus says it this way, in my name, you shall cast out devils. There is no other way to cast out a devil than in the name of Jesus. There is no other code. There is no other access. There is no other way. He said, in my name, you will cast out devils. In my name, you will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In my name, if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. So I grew into not saying, and I had to repent along the way. And some of you may have to repent along the way to close off some doors that you have opened and said, no, 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 I don't rebuke you. Satan, the Lord rebuked thee. And if the Lord has rebuked thee, you are already rebuked. But the Bible tells us what to do with the devil in the book of James. He says, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. It's in the book of James chapter 5, I believe. Submit to God, resist the devil, he will flee. You cannot resist the devil if you have not first submitted to God. Submit to God. When I submit to God, I'm submitting to the word because in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the, and the word was God. So when I submit to God, it's not that I just accepted Jesus, but I have now allowed him not just to be God, but I have allowed him to be Lord. He has lordship over my life. He has rulership over my life. He has authority over my life. I don't argue with God about what I want to do or how I want to do it. I go to him and sometimes going to him is going to the word because John 1 and 1 says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. So I submit to God by submitting to his word. When I submit to his word, I am walking after the spirit. So it's all working together when he says that we don't walk after the flesh, we walk after the spirit. And the way I do that is submitting to God. I submit to his, not just him being God, not just him being father, but him being Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, which are human reasoning and false arguments. Then it says, casting down imaginations. I want you to look at that first word. It says casting. That is I-N-G. That means that is something that will happen as long as you are on this earth. You may get a victory in one area in your imaginations and then there is another area later. You will forever at some point, it may not be the same thing, but you will have the opportunity. And I'm going to say that that way, the opportunity casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. 
So this is, so it's telling you how to do it. It's all in order, train. It's telling you what you're doing. You're casting down imaginations. Those false arguments are every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Let's read that in the, in the NLT. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. I'm going to read that in the NIV. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. So what does that mean? If I take, I take captive every thought that is against what I know about God. I take captive every thought I have that is against what the word says. Every thought against the knowledge of God and I make that thought be obedient to Christ, which means that thought now becomes what his thoughts are. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. His ways are higher than my ways. And so I make the thoughts that I have that are against the knowledge of God, I bring them under obedience to Christ. Hallelujah. And I said that all to say because someone asked the question about spiritual warfare for those of you who are joining. Hey, T. Williams, of those of you who are joining. I said that all to say I want to kind of get to a wrap up point. And I thank all of you that have given badges throughout. Some of you I see have sold. If you'd like to sew, there is a, a link in the bio where you can sew. But I, or you can sew at dollar sign Christy Dobbins. But I want to say this to you. I want these words to go over in your mind. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It's, 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 it's going to sound like I'm making a switch. I am, but I'm not. The Lord gave me this passage of scripture some years ago, uh, maybe like 2015, that I spoke at a mental health summit. And what, what happened at this luncheon was they had someone who was a licensed professional counselor, who was a skilled counselor, skilled Christian counselor, talk about the mind, talk about the will, talk about the emotions, our soulish realms from a clinical perspective. And she gave natural remedies. I need y'all to follow me where I'm going. Natural tools, that's the best word, for people to fight a natural fight they were warring in their mind. But when I began to speak, they wanted me to speak from a spiritual perspective about mental health. And I, we weren't all talking about soul care at that time like we are now. This was 2015, so this was seven years ago. And I, as I began to meditate, the Holy Spirit began to bring my testimony before me. And some of you have heard my testimony, but I'm only telling it again in this part to make this scripture come to life for you. And the Lord began to speak to me and he began to take me all the way back to 1987 when my mother and my brother were killed in a car accident and he began to allow me to reflect on my journey of how grief uh, disrupted my life and even though back then no one used the word trauma how our family had been completely traumatized. No one was even using trauma in masses in 2015 when the Lord gave me this message and when we're talking about warfare, the greatest place of warfare is in your mind. That's why the Apostle Paul is talking to them about bringing everything into a captivity that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. It is in the book of Romans that we learn that it is with the mind that you serve God. It is with the heart that you worship him, but it's with the mind that you serve him. It is this mind that you have to actively choose to be renewed. It is with this mind that you have to actually actively read the word of God and allow the word of God to take up residence on the inside of you and renew 
renew your mind, retrain your mind. And once your mind and your thinking begins to, to change, it also impacts your emotions. It also impacts all of your sensory, uh, sensory systems is what I want to say. It impacts your, your vision. It impacts your, your sight. It impacts your emotional stability and your well-being. And he began to talk to me and say, look at this again. Look at this and look at your testimony. For though we walk in the flesh, you were in the flesh, Christy, when this horrible tragedy happened that broke your heart, that broke your father's heart, that broke your sister's heart, that disrupted life the way that you knew it. You were in the flesh, Christy. You were a human, yes. But the problem is you begin to war after the flesh in, in, in the effort to try to anesthetize the pain. You begin to seek fleshly things in order to try to bring about a healing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You begin to seek fleshly things to avoid healing because somebody on here is avoiding healing because the only way to get to healing is to confront what is wrong. And somebody by sheer means of avoidance is your coping mechanism, the way that you cope with life, the way that you cope with heartache, the way that you cope with everything that has disappointed you, that has caused you to have heartache a heartache and heartbreak, you avoid it. That's a fleshly method. That's a the fleshly way of dealing with a fleshly pain. And he told me to look again. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal. But he began to speak to me. He says, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, yet you have been waging a carnal battle. You have not won this battle because you have not chosen the proper tools in order to give you the victory. I already have a predestined victory prepared for you, but there are only particular weapons that you can use to access those tools. Your intellect can't access those tools. Your degrees can't access those tools. Your, your status, your social status cannot access those tools. Uh, your personality cannot access those tools. Your knowledge base, your knowledge, the very thing that you're proud of cannot access those tools. I've given you everything. That's what the second Peter says. I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. And I've given you tools, Christy. I've given you weapons even to fight against a grieving soul. I've given you weapons to even fight against your heart that seems like it's betraying you because the pain is overwhelming and you're much like the apostle Paul when you would do good Good, evil presents itself. And now, oh wretched man am I, because this thing that is still wounded and still broken on the inside of me, I am not choosing the proper weapons in order to fill this void. And I keep going around and around this mountain over and over again. And even though I did what I thought I should do and come back to Jesus, I still had the same weapons. See, in one season, it was clear when I consider myself backslidden. When one season, it was clear what my weapons were. My weapons to anesthetize the pain was to go, go out, was to drink when I go out. The weapons was to, to have relationships with people who were not my spouse. Those were the weapons. Those were the weapons to anesthetize the pain. And God invited me into, in me preparing for this mental health symposium, he invited me into a space that I had never heard before. And he spoke to me in a language that if you listen in America. We've heard this language before. And I don't know who this word is for because these words are for somebody. What God said to me, he said it. You, 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 you have all these other weapons that you picked up. You picked up anger as a weapon to help you. You picked up, uh, you picked up that sharp tongue. The reason you go off so quickly, it's really that void on the inside, but that's actually a weapon. It's a defense mechanism that you have built up in order to protect you. Your anger is a weapon. That sharp tongue is a weapon. Avoidance is your weapon. These are all the weapons that you are using to, to anesthetize the pain, but yet these weapons will not get you free. And the words God spoke to me that night, I'm going to speak them to you because he says, I have designed weapons for you for freedom. Your victory is attached to these weapons. And unless you access these weapons, you will be a carnal Christian and you will live like a sinner 
on this earth because you have not exchanged your weapons for my weapons. And the words he told me was, drop your weapons. Oh God, you didn't, you didn't catch it. See, I caught it when he said it to me. He said, drop your weapons. Much like when the police officer is chasing somebody or in a standoff and they tell them to drop their weapons. Because when you open up your hands and drop your weapons, when the anger falls out, I'm able to hone and grab the weapon of prayer. When all of these things begin to drop out of my hands, I'm now effectively. And I want you to know I have been praying all the time, but I was mixing my weapon with his weapon. I was mixing prayer with anger. I was mixing prayer with bitterness. I was mixing in prayer with all of these other things that was contaminating the weapon but tonight the spirit of the living God sent me to tell somebody drop your weapons you're not going to get the victory with your weapons you're not going to win this battle with your weapons you're not going to have success with your weapons you're not going to obtain the promises of God that are yea and amen in him they are yea and amen in him not outside of him you will not gain the promises of God outside of him you will get Gain natural success and that is still not the promise. You might become a millionaire and that is still not the promise. You might get married and that is still not the promise. There is only one way to guarantee you get the promises of God and you do it in him. You cannot do it outside of him. You cannot do it with your intellect. You cannot do it with your social status. You cannot do it with you having all these followers. Whatever you think it is that is getting you the success you need when you get it outside of Jesus, you are not obtaining the promises and the enemy is sending you a smoke screen or a camouflage and he is causing you to be content with a modicum of success and it may look real successful to the world but because it's not the promises of God it is not the success that God has ordained for you Jesus Jesus Jesus, Jesus, the devil don't mind you being successful out of the will of God. He don't mind you gaining riches, fortune, and fame, and you're doing it outside of God because he understands the scripture said so many times we've squatted these scriptures and we've left parts out because they've become so common. But the Bible doesn't just say the promises of God are yea and amen. He said the promises God of God are yes in him and amen in him. You cannot get them outside of him. Drop. Your weapons. And I'm much like the Apostle Paul. I know I'm being bold right now. Paul was writing and he said, some of you think I'm being bold because I'm writing and I'm not with you face to face. But I'm telling you, because even though I'm face to face on the screen, we're not in the same room. But I'm telling you, if I were in the room with you, I would allow you to know you've got to drop your weapon. If you don't drop your weapons, you will continue to go around the same mountain over and over again. You will continue to suffer and suffer and suffer. It will seem like you're getting ahead and then you're going to go back 10 steps. It seems like you're gaining a little traction and then you're going to look up and it seems like you got the wind knocked out of you because you keep co-mingling. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The same way they tell you not to co-mingle your funds in business, you are co-mingling your weapons. You're using a little bit of Jesus and you're using a little bit of anger. You're using a little bit of Jesus and a little bit of cussing folks out. A little bit of Jesus and a little bit of manipulation and witchcraft behind the scenes. A little bit of Jesus and a little bit of sage. A little bit of Jesus and a little little bit of crystals. Drop your weapons. Stop settling for the counterfeits. Stop settling for the substitutes. Stop settling for the things that the enemy has packaged and put in wording that it looks like it's God, but yet it, he has separated it from God. Listen, drop your weapons. Drop them tonight. 
the day you hear my voice, heart and not your heart. You don't have an excuse. Some of you come on Sunday night, check in every Sunday after every Sunday, and you ask me question after question after question. And God says you keep asking Elder Dobbins question because you will not fall on your face and allow me to talk to you. You will not fall on your face and get in my presence and allow me to begin to heal your broken heart. You keep looking to man for things that for things that you can only get from me. You keep looking to man for healing that you can only get from me. You keep looking to man and I keep trying to tell you I am the author and the finisher of your faith. And you who I have, I have begun a good work in you, I will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Drop your weapons. Your proclivity to retreat every time you don't get your way. Your proclivity to retreat every time somebody offends you. Listen, I want you to know this is not the season to be easily offended. We're all being tested in that area. This is not the season to be tempted to be easily offended. Let me let me give you a scripture. This is not the season to be easily offended. This is the season to take it to the Lord. Listen, I feel like I've been repenting now more than ever because when the thought even comes, I just go ahead and cast it down. Lord, I repent for that. Lord, I don't want to hold bitterness. Lord, I don't want to hold uh, forgiveness. Lord, I give it to you. If you have to give it to him every day, when you open up your mouth and invite him into the process, one day it will happen that it will not hit your heart the same way it once hit your heart. You have got to understand the season and time that we are living in and the enemy is trying to get you to forfeit your promises over things that don't even matter. Drop your weapon. I'm going to read you a scripture. I'm in the book of Galatians. I'm going to see what version I'm going to read this in. Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to read it in the King James. Yes, Terry, I've been repenting now more than ever. Yes, Trend, do not forfeit your promises. Come on, T. Williams. Hey, Tanya, how are you? I'm going to read you. This is what this spirit of offense, listen. The spirit of offense is, is sent up. Listen, listen, listen. Let me just tell you this. The devil's kingdom is not divided. The people of God, we have got to intentionally stop allowing ourselves to get caught up in confusion and division. The kingdom, the devil's kingdom is not divided. They are all in unison and in one accord. But I'm going to read you this because I'm going to tell you, you want you to drop your weapons. And this is the verse that dropped in my spirit. And we can wrap up on this, I believe, is Galatians 5 verse 6. It says, for in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth, availeth anything nor uncircumcision. So he said, if you're in Jesus, it doesn't matter whether you're circumcised or you're uncircumcised. Yes, God is killing our pride. It doesn't matter if you're circumcised or if you're uncircumcised. But I want you to hear this. But faith which worketh by love. Some of you it's not your faith that is the problem. It is not you don't believe and you don't have faith. I'm going to read it to you in the Amplified so you can get this. For if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. But listen to this. But only faith. So circumcision or uncircumcision don't mean anything, but faith is what matters. But only faith activated and expressed and working through love. 
Faith works by love. So some of you are like, I know I have faith. I know I believe God. And God is saying tonight, but faith works by love. So maybe it's not your faith walk that is off. It's the love walk. Because faith works by love. That's Galatians 5 and 6. I want you to read that in multiple translations, but I just read it in the Amplified. But only faith activated and expressed and working through love. Faith works by love. Hallelujah. Saints, if you just got on in the last 10 minutes, I will post this almost immediately on my YouTube. My YouTube is Christy Dobbins. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. Um, because we are going to go in the beginning of 2023, we're going to start putting more consistent content and building that channel out. Um, it's free to subscribe. So we just ask that you subscribe. I'm trying to get a certain amount of subscribers so that we will be able to have um, house more and do more on there. And so faith works by love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we repent for using weapons that were carnal. We repent for not allowing ourselves to be an instrument used by you for your glory. Father, we repent for the spirit of offense, for sins omitted, for sins committed. We repent for not doing things you've told us to do, and we repent for doing things that you've instructed us not to do. Tonight, God, we repent. And Father, we commit to exchanging our weapons for your weapons. Father, your word says that you give us beauty for ashes. It's an exchange. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your mercy and we thank you for your grace. We thank you that you drew us all here by the power of your Holy Spirit and you knew from the foundation of the world that someone would need to know tonight to drop their weapons and someone would need to know tonight that faith works by love. Somebody has been working hard trying to build their faith muscles and they don't even know it's their love that's causing their faith to be weak. We repent. We turn away from. Father, I pray that we release those who have wounded us, have hurt us, that we would just release any unforgiveness, any root of bitterness. Hallelujah. Fill us up, Lord, until we want no more. We thank you, Lord, for this invitation. Hallelujah. This invitation to come and dine with you tonight. We thank you that you gave us manna from on high. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're welcome, Lady HMC. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will be live tomorrow night. Uh, at 7.45 p.m., uh, we will be going live for Worship in the Word on Fifth Monday, which actually happens to be Halloween. Hey, Shalanda. Thank you to everyone that bought um, badges. You're welcome, Terry. Um, 
Hallelujah. 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 Hey, Billy, I see you came on while I was praying. God bless you. Praising God for your complete healing. Listen, if you have not listened, and I know I say this a lot, but tonight I'm so serious. The Spirit of the Lord visited us. I thought I was going to talk about one thing, but from someone's question, there was another prompting to talk about um, spiritual warfare. Yes, Closing the Gap. Thank you for even reminding me, Alexandra. Uh, Closing the Gap is this Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m. I'm telling you, the Lord is doing great and mighty things. The Lord is building up a remnant. As I stated to you all, I went to a prayer meeting on on this past Friday night. And listen, the Lord has even given further instructions for me. And so the Lord is sending me deeper. And if he's sending me deeper, that means everyone that has listened to me, that everyone that he has assigned me to, uh, they are going deeper. Yes, Diana, it, we will stream live tomorrow. You will be, you will go deeper. You will go deeper. You will go deeper. God is, God is doing great and mighty things. And listen, you don't want to miss the movement of God. You don't want to miss it by being carnal. You don't want to miss it by being in the wrong place at the wrong time. We want to be in position to receive the promises of God that are yes and amen. Closing the gap is in DeSoto. Vanessa just put the address um, at 1700 Northwest Moreland Road in DeSoto, Texas at 10 a.m. Uh, Closing the gap originally was for women, but we have during the pandemic, men began to come. And so we still have men that come. So if there are any men that are on that desire to come, you can come. Um, we are um, believing God for greater. And everyone that was there last month know that he, we went greater. There has been a supernatural shift. And listen, this, 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 there's, a, there's something going on right now. You all are living uh, in a time where, where God is preparing the church for his return. And so there is a lot that is going on and you don't want to be deceived by some of the things that you think are good, but are not God. You really want to go deeper in the spirit. I pray that the Lord will intensify your discernment. And listen, some of you may just need to pray and ask the Lord for discernment. It is a gift of the spirit so that you will know that you are in the right vein of the spirit and right where God would have you to be. And so if you can meet us on Saturday, if you want to, you can come tomorrow night. Um, that information, I don't even, I don't think I have a flyer for that one. Um, it is at the Roseland Community Center in Dallas, Texas. I think that's 1949 North Washington in Dallas, Texas tomorrow night at 745. Um, there, um, they will have an alternative to Halloween for children and for parents, uh, starting about six or six thirty, and then about seven forty-five. We will get ready for worship and the Word of God. And I am looking forward to God doing great and mighty things. I uh, thought I had another announcement. Oh, again, for those of you who desire, I forget that I have a course, that I still have two courses on my website. I am working on a new course that I plan to roll out. My goal is for this course to be rolled out on, um, I believe it's whatever the last Monday of November is. I believe November 28th through December 19th, which we would meet for four weeks. We would meet for four weeks on, um, thank you, Darian put um, the address for tomorrow night. D. Lewis Brick just put it for tomorrow night. Um, but um, I have a class that's coming out. Uh, that will go back to my normal way of doing classes. So that class will be uh, live interaction. Uh, I will teach about an hour and I will allow about 30 minutes for Q&A. And for those of you who took the old classes, you know, if the spirit moves, the spirit moves. If we prophesy, we prophesy. If we cast our spirits on Zoom, we cast them out. Whatever the Lord says, do. So that class will be uh, beginning November 28th. But really, and this is not, I am not a good salesman. So and Billy can tell you this, I'm not a good salesman. But tonight, because someone asked me about spiritual warfare, I want you to remember that my spiritual boot camp 
class is on my site. It is $99. It is on demand, but it can prepare you for where God has taken us at the end of the year. Listen, we invest in all of these things. I'm going to say this tonight. We invest in everything to, to learn how to grow a business. We can learn we, all of these things. It is time that you invest in your spiritual development. And I will always come on here for free. I will always have closing the gap for free. So I'm not a person that even charges for everything. Um, you go, you, the courses are on, on my site, Quint Trend. The courses are on the, on the, on the website. Thank you, Vanessa. So you click courses, take the Holy Spirit first. It is free. It is a precursor to spiritual boot camp. This whole night started by Lady HMC asking a question about warfare and the Spirit of the Lord. Let us, hey, um, how are you doing, Nola? I, I want you to go back, Nola, if you can, and listen to this broadcast. But Nola, I want to personally invite you on Saturday to close in the gap. I will send you, um, I will send you that flyer. But it's good to see you on. And so, listen, I, I just want the body of Christ. We've got to grow up, y'all. We've got to grow up. And I, and now I'm gonna sign a little fussy, but I, I want you to know. I watch people pay for what is important to them. Look, look at me. I, I have braids. We, ladies, we pay for everything. I have nails. We pay for everything that is important to us, and then we'll look up. And the Bible says it this way: Don't gain the whole world and lose your soul. Don't gain the whole world and lose your soul. You have got to build yourself up. And this day and time, not everyone is giving you full meat of the gospel. I'm going to talk about this a little later this week. Not everybody is giving you meat of the gospel. And you have to begin to discern the meat from the milk. If you have been saved for, for more than five years, you should be on meat already. If you're not, then I need you to really lean into the presence of the Holy Ghost to help you become stable, to help you desire the things of God, to desire walking after the spirit, you begin to seek his face, read his word, spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. Trent, I know you have the Holy Ghost. I want you to start finding you, find, start small, five time, five minutes a day, speaking in, speaking in tongues, five minutes a day, build yourself up, then move to 10 minutes, then move. You're going to, it's time. It's time. It is time. The enemy has accelerated his attack, uh, attacks against us. And it is time for the body of Christ to stop being reactive and being proactive about the things of God. God met us here tonight, y'all. He always does, but there's something about tonight that we can all say the Lord has visited us. So I thank you all. Thank you all again. Closing the Gap is Saturday. It will be live tomorrow night, fifth Monday. It will be live. Um, and listen, I'm like the old folks. Believe I run on and see what the end's going to be. The Lord gave me a charge in prayer on Friday night. Uh, I oftentimes don't get prophetic words. And I'm going to be honest. I oftentimes don't receive prophetic words either. And so the Lord gave me a word. He's given me a charge. I am wholeheartedly uh, taking that charge. Hey, Bianca. We are closing out. I do want you to go back and listen to this broadcast tonight. It will be very beneficial to you. Uh, so I want you to go back and listen. But listen, we are going to go on and see what the end is going to be because we already know who wins. God bless y'all. Love y'all. Don't forget, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you, Terry. If you have, if, thank you for those of you who gave badges tonight. If you didn't give badges, thank you for those who sowed seed. I appreciate it. The oil, I will get the oil out for those of you who requested oil, who does not live here in, um, uh, in, in the Dallas Fort Worth area. We will get the oil out to you hopefully by the end of the week. Um, we have a lot, I have a lot going on, but I want to get it all mailed out to you so that you will have it. Uh, with you as soon as possible. And as they used to sing, I'm going to sing it one night, but not tonight. May the Lord bless you real good. May the Lord bless you real good. I spent a lot of time praying that he would. May the Lord God bless you real good. Thank you all. Love you all. Thank you, Miss Kena Lene. Love you all. Have a good night.